Hi, this is Mark with Right Line Trading. It is uh, 415, 415, 2015. And uh, if you didn't do your income taxes or file an extension, you're in trouble today. So uh, this was a very difficult market to trade today. And frankly, they're all difficult. But it was very choppy today. And it always is really hard on Wednesdays on crude inventory report. Now, gold really gave us some good trades today. Um, it's where we made most of our money. We had this break. Right here. This nice retracement. And we pushed down seven. For seven ticks. Only a first target, but we'll take it. And, and in fact, I just opened the room at 827. Now, there was economic news at 830. And this is, this is a nice trade to the upside. But this came on economic news. And all of these candles were spit out at 8.30, 8.30, 8.30, 8.30. 8 so there's no way to catch that move. Then we had this really pretty move here. Now, we avoided a lot of bad trades. This break to the downside on this strongly rising 50. I think that might have given us a first target. I don't know. This break on a strongly rising 50 would have been a loser. We just stayed with the direction of the 50, and it really paid off. We had the move to the upside, the retracement, and the move up for 18 ticks. That was our biggest winner today. And you see all the great trades come with background bias, order flow, and momentum. When you trade without them, we got it here, here. Now, this was a trade. I just did, I didn't take it because of the pivot. And it went right up. It was a pivot smasher. And it went... 15 ticks. Just didn't assume the pivot was going to break. I should have. It was a small swing pivot. Not not that big of a deal. And we had everything going for us on this trade. Um, probably a miss. Then I took this trade. Uh, I never trade a yellow modified 15 ever. Um, but um, no, I took this trade. I didn't mark it. It's actually hidden here. This was the riskiest trade I took today. It was a break, retracement. You'll notice it didn't have bias. And it just made it five, which is why I have to be very careful when you take these trades. Uh, I just really felt that um, gold was going to break support, give us bias, and continue, but it did not. Then this was a trade to the upside. It was an engulfing candle, C engulfer right off of the modified 15 and it pushed four ticks in our direction and then I had everyone move their stop to break even and it came back and took us out uh, it was the right thing to do it was the prudent thing to do because it went four we needed five for a first target and it went 13 ticks but we didn't have really we were trading a longer term trend the modified 15 was yellow and once it went four in our direction and then came back all the way to break even. I had no, I, 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 you know, I had no guarantee this trade wasn't going to go against us. It was really a shame. One more tick would have given us a first target, and then we could have ridden this trade all the way to the top. That's what makes day trading so tough. Um, your retrospectoscope is easy, but we got plus five, we got plus eighteen, and we got plus seven. Now, Russell, we're, I'm thinking of removing. It's got no volume, 32,000 contracts. And, and look at the Russell. I mean, it opened here. And it just trades. It's just trading flat. Now, this was a nice move to the upside. And the only reason I didn't take it was because there's no volume. There's the retracement and the move up. 
didn't go anywhere. I didn't, I didn't anticipate it was going to go anywhere. I had the trade in for a while, and it sat so long, I could just see that there was no volume behind it. And with no volume, you've got no energy to, to push this, these trades through. So there was really absolutely zilch on the Russell today. Nothing. And the ES also was just not helpful today. <clears throat> it opened right here. And these are all the candles we got the whole day. Now, this may have been a trade right here, but, you know, this is 1130. We're long gone from the room. It's coming right off the 50, and the 50 is rolling. Modified 15 is heading down. Um, it's a little bit dangerous without bias, but it did press down, and I may have been I may have taken a trade like this, um, but we're long since out of the room. And um, in this in this, this is just horrific chop, horrific. Now this really is an aggressive trade. I just saw it. There's the move to the upside. There's the retracement. And the move up, um, you do have a green 15, a green 50, background bias, order flow and momentum. I just didn't see this until now. Now we do take a pullback, and that would have gone for uh, a point and a quarter. Not a big trade. That's really it. There's nothing else on the Russell. I'm sorry, on the ES. And then crude. Now here's our performance. Let me move that all out of the way here. And let me move crude. Oh, let me open up crude. Now crude had inventory today. So there are going to be a million candles. Now, here's the first trade that we had. Almost right after the room opened. And it just didn't work. I mean, perfect trade. Move to the upside. Retracement. No reason this trade shouldn't have had a continuation long. Not every perfect signal works. And the auto trader took it as well and took a loss. Then this was a potential trade to the upside. It's coming off consolidation. Um, uh, I stood aside on it because I didn't like the uh, size of the candle body. But in retrospect, this might have been this might have been a nice trade. That would have gone 18. Now this is a very dangerous trade to take. Um, multiple areas of support on the higher time frames, because and that's why you, there's no bias. You can see this continuation short would have failed. This continuation short would have failed. So this is a very very risky initiation. Plus, again, we want to trade in the direction of the 50. The 50 was hard to the upside here. And all of our nice winning trades came with the 50 in our direction. 15 and 50. Now, we're going into crude inventory. So all of this is just a mess. The auto trader did get a win right here. For 15 ticks. Perfect setup. And then we finally, after a long wait, got the move up, the retracement. Uh, this, again, th this is why I should have taken that other trade anticipating a break of the pivot this one just went right through the pivot smashed through gave us two targets at 10 ticks and we were done and if we would have stayed in the room i mean there's no way of knowing it we would have had uh, um, additional winners this was a great channeling trade move to the upside and you can see it's got that sideways consolidation the move up this would have been a first target then it starts to channel again. It doesn't matter whether you entered here, you entered here, or you entered here. 
you never would have been stopped out and you would have gotten another winner. Then this would have come back and you would have gotten another winner. So this, we have, actually, it, if we would have stayed in the room, and these are these are gimme trades. These are these are not trade questionable trades. That went six. This went ten. And this one went eighteen. Now you know we don't. I don't have a crystal ball though. This is an overbought signal here. And I wouldn't have taken it. It's significantly overbought. But it was a fourth retracement in the trend. Also very risky. And it's 23 ticks. Now, I, you don't know that this is going to happen. We got our 10 here at 10.59. And we um, did our recap and closed the room. Then uh, 20 minutes later, we start getting this very strong move to the upside on crude. And it gave us nice signals to get into the long trade. Repetitive signals that just gave us huge moves. But no way of knowing it. So here's how we finish the day. It's a little, let me just make this a little bit easier to read here. I don't see, I don't see how I can do that. Hold on one second. All right. Well, unfortunately, this is the way it's scaling it. But we had um, four winners and a loser on crew. We had plus 10. One contract at 5 ticks. One contract at 10. Then the other one out at 5. And we had the minus 9. It was three contracts. That's, you know, it's 27 ticks. $270 loss. Then on gold... We had one contract, uh, the seven, one contract at five, two at zero. That came right back and took us out. On the 18, we had one off at five, one off at 10, one off at 16. On the plus five, we had one contract at five ticks, two contracts at zero. Our net ticks were 31. Our net equity was $340. The auto trader had a winner and a loser. So far, it's net equity. Another winner, Leo? All right, just had another winner. Uh, what time? 11. I see it right here. Wait, 11.25? I don't see the, uh, I don't see the uh, 11.25 entry. Which entry was it? Was it this one? This one? Okay, right here. I just went six. What did it come back and? All right. So it was only a first target trade, but now the now uh, the auto trader is breaking back. Now it has. It rarely takes three trades in a day. Now it has one loser and two winners. How much did it make on that trade? 120. So now the auto trader is up to plus 20. It was down 400, and now it's taken um, two winners to break back all the way. So um, net equity for the room, $340 on four winners and a loser. Auto Trader has three trades, two winners and a loser, and uh, it's got a net equity of $20. Very, very unusual day um, for the uh, auto. It very, very rarely takes this many trades. I'm just going to switch these around. And um, that's it for today. So listen, we hope to see everybody in the room tomorrow. Um, here's the information for our free trial. Uh, sign up for a free trial, www.rightlinetrading.com. Uh, there you'll, you'll see a link to our daily net equity for our auto trader, both ES and Russell Crude and Gold. Uh, our, our daily net equity for the trading room, our daily, um, I'm sorry, a link to our um, uh, free trial, a, a link to a contact us page, and you can email us directly at info at rightlinetrading.com or call us at 1-855-765-6681. Um, 
And I just want to let you know that, um, you know, today we had a lot of um, people on trial in the room. And uh, today was a hard day. And I think that people anticipate that we're going to take, you know, we're going to sweep three winners and leave. And that every big move we're going to be in on. And we're just, you know, they, they, you know, they show a lot of impatience. Uh, and uh, they leave the room quickly. Uh, after an hour and a half or so, they're gone. And the point, the fact is, is that day trading takes an enormous amount of patience and you just have to stay with it. And if you press the trades, if you, if you push the market, you're, you're going to wind up with a losing day. And today was a great day to take a beating um, if we didn't trade with a tremendous amount of specif specificity. I, I, I left that break even and went 13 ticks, but that's okay. Um, you, you don't look back and you don't have a crystal ball. So I just advise, if you come into the room, come in with patience and remember that we're looking to trade for our, the people in the room who come in every single day. Uh, even though it's an educational service only, we want to make educational dollars. And uh, I trade with, with just a tremendous amount of patience. I wait for my setups. And if that means letting other setups that have marginal um, predictive value uh, go and they go on to be winners. It's irrelevant. You're never going to trade all the winners. You just have to avoid the losers. And we did very, very well today. The one loser we did did take was a stellar setup, and not every stellar setup works, even with a positive predictive value of over 80% um, on on our perfect setups. It means that two out of ten of perfect trades are going to fail. And there's nothing you can do about that. Just the, way, just the way the market is. But if you can trade with 80%, and we're close to that this month, um, then that's the way to be a profitable day trader. So listen, everyone. Have a great afternoon. And I look forward to seeing everyone in the trading room tomorrow. Take care.